it's a great honor and a privilege to introduce Ursula Seligman and then you became um, Lowenstein. And you were born in Germany? I was born in Ronnenberg, Germany, which is a small village next to Hanover. That's where I went to synagogue. We didn't have a synagogue, but during the high holidays, the house I was born in is, is here. I was born wow. in this it's house. A, it's a beautiful house. And during the high holidays, so the people from Rondenberg didn't have to drive to Hanover for services. We had two rooms up here where my father got a Torah scroll and we had services, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, every year. Wow. And what year were you born? 1923. I was born 1923, so now I'm 97. And Canyon I'm still here in, in Jerusalem, a very happy lady. The reason I came, because my entire family is here. I have one son, four grandchildren, and 25 great-grandchildren, all living in Israel. It's wonderful. So, and can I ask, did you come from quite a religious family? I, Your family? Uh, were they? My grandparents <laughs> were religious, were orthodox. My father became, was raised orthodox, but became conservative. The reason I cannot tell you, I can't ask him anymore. Mm -hmm. But and so we belong to very nice in in America. The John Orthodox, I mean, a conservative congregation, mm -hmm. uh, or Kodesh, and our rabbi was Rabbi Porat. So was born in Israel, and he died, in, and he was buried in uh, in, in Israel. But uh, we always had a Jewish home, but. Uh, my father, I think it's because of business. He was a meat handler. He went into the different countries in Germany to sell and buy meat and buy cattle. And we also had a slaughterhouse. In back of our house there was a slaughterhouse where we, my father slaughtered cattle for kosher and non-kosher. You know, when you, when you have a a cow or, or a calf or a lamb, the forequarter is kosher, the mm -hmm. hindquarter, so he sold the forequarter to kosher butch, butchers and the hindquarter to uh, the goyim. And That's how I was raised. And you, did you go to a public school? I went to a public school and for religious school well, we, I had to take the train to Hanover because we didn't have it a Jewish school in our town, but I went twice a week on a train to Hanover to, hand over to learn. Yes, did you have did you, you the friends that you mixed with? You, the friends? Like the neighbors. friends I mixed with, not Jewish. Only our family. I had three, four cousins, and we got together for holidays. But otherwise, I was with uh, Christian. And But did you get on very well? I got along. I got, our little town, we did not have anti-Semitism in our town. It was only when it was Kristallnacht in November 1938 is when my father was arrested to send to Buchenwald. And I couldn't go to, I could only go to school in, in Ronnenberg for eight years. After that, I couldn't enter any school. I was not admitted because I was Jewish. Were you the only Jewish child in your, in your class? Yeah. No, I had a cousin also. There was very few Jewish people living. Just they were all sort of family, like mm -hmm. cousins of my father's, and one brother, but but one brother and three, four cousins and and their children. But fortunately, most of them got out. But one couple didn't get out. A brother and a sister. They we lost about ten, twelve people in the wow. in the Holocaust including my grandfather and my uncle and aunts and cousins. But uh, I... Do you, can I ask, do you, do you remember Kristallnacht? I was in Kristallnacht. I was just trying to tell you. I couldn't go to school anymore. So I learned a trade to make millinery hats. 
So I worked for out for company Kaunitz in Hanover. So I worked every day I went to work. And I was only 15 to 16 years old. They gave me the key to open up a store. I, I got off the train, I got off, get on the street in Hanover and it's all glass. I went to the store, it's all glass. I went back home and there they arrested my father to go to Buchenwald. That was the only time I knew I was Jewish that I wasn't liked in our little town. And even the mayor, the Bürgermeister, he came when the SS and SR uh, picked up my father. He told, he told my father, my father was in World War I in Germany and he had a black horse. He, and the mayor came to my father's house before the SR and SS came. Take that with you if you get out of Buchenwald faster. So the, they were all friends of my father's. He didn't have any enemies where we lived. The Nazis, the Nazis were there, but they did not hurt us personally. It's just the whole story that the Jews were not liked and we're still not liked. And can, actually, can I just ask, after November, after, after November, November, after, after Kristallnacht, after what happened to your friends? Did you, did you maintain a friendship? They were very nice to us until we left the place. We just had to try to find a place to get out of Germany, and that wasn't so easy. Yeah. As the, my father's cousins, one went to South America to, to went to Montevideo, one went uh, in Uruguay, one went to Brazil, others went to England, and others went to America. But we had a little bit problem. My father. My grandfather had a brother who was disabled, and he lived with us. And for us to get out of Germany, we had to first find a place for him to, uh, to, stay. to stay. So when my father came back from Buchenwald, he went to a farmer and gave him a lot of land which we owned, so he could take care of his uncle. Unfortunately, so we got him there, but we went on the ships to St. Louis. In 19, May 1939, my parents and I were going to Cuba to stay there until we could go to America. But America had a quota system. So when we got to Havana, we weren't able to land because the government wouldn't accept our visa. Can I just ask, just to mention, when, when your parents told you, you, how old were you? You were only about 15 at this time? I but was... 15, 16. My parents didn't tell me. I, I experienced it. I was in in Hanover when, with all the glass because when I was in Ronnenberg from my home place, there was no glass. Because uh, there, there was no shul, there was no synagogue in your hometown. But it wasn't only it wasn't only synagogues. They, they made, damaged all the businesses. But the, the mayor from our little town told the SS and SA, "Don't you dare and hurt." Siegfried's house. Wow. And we were not affected. But can I ask you, Isha, after Kristallnacht, your parents realized that they have to leave? We had to leave. My father was in Buchenwald this first day of Kristallnacht. And uh, <coughs> so we, we got this visa for Cuba, but in the meantime, we had to, you know, uh, you have a home, you have a business. You have a <laughs> You can't just pick up and go. Okay. So we left. Kristallnacht was November 38, and May 39 we went on the St. Louis. Was this the very first time you had gone on a, on a ship? Uh, <coughs> yes. And was it uh, exciting, a little bit exciting? It was going beautiful. We went first class. It was wow. delicious food, dancing, all kinds of activities. We had no idea what, what was going to what, was, what we were going to see when we got to Cuba. We had our passport, everything in our hands. We were one step from, from, the, from, from Havana. Loudspeakers, no one gets off the ship. My father's <coughs> cousin was at the harbor. And they had already rented an apartment for us. It was just tough luck. They wouldn't let anybody off the ship? 
There were about three people, I think. They had different kind of visas and they let them off. But one or two committed suicide, they just got jumped off. And then they tried to go to to Canada and to America and... No. <coughs> what happened is Germany asked... I don't have... I should have had the book. I gave it to my grandchildren. There's a book of the St. Louis where the captain was ordered from German government to get back to Germany. So they could kill all of us. And he was t getting in touch with Hyers and Joint Distribution Committee. And they finally, f we stayed <coughs> near Miami on the boat for about a, several days and they were able to get in touch with these organizations and they finally got in touch with England, France, Holland and Belgium. So each one took a force, with almost 250 each, and we were chosen to go to Belgium. Now people who went to England didn't have the problem we have, but the ones who went to Belgium, France and Holland, some people were luckier, they, they had some kind of family and they were hidden. We were not hidden. We went on the, into cattle cars to Gurs, Camp de Gurs. I don't know if you know where that is, in ah. the southern part of France. But can I just ask you, Usha, still yeah. when you were on the ship, and I think you've got a picture of the the um, Louis, the SS, the Saint Louis. I think the cat. Yes, I have it. Is this the yeah. catalog? Yes, this one. Ah, this, this is, is the, okay. This, this is, is the. Saint Louis. That's the Saint Louis. Wow. So take this picture. Wow. And were there any children? And inside, and this is my father's. And my, uh, there's a story about it that we tried to get out of there, but. This is your father and your and your mother. No, that's my father and I. That's awesome. Your father and yourself and you. Wow. The Selig, uh, Seligman family. Wow, this is so amazing. We may. They, we are making this appeal to you on behalf of your relative, Miss uh, Ursula Seligman, because we believe that when you are aware of her pitiful circumstances, you will feel impelled to come to her assistance. Yes, the road that to. And this was in March 15, 1940. Wow. So I'm just going to read. Wow, that's um, <laughs> amazing. And do you, you remember being on the ship? I of mean, course. You remember, and when, when you were not allowed to disembark in... In Belgium. The no, no, when you were still in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Cuba. I and remember the loud, standing there. And you could see the port, everything. And, you, and they would not allow. <coughs> Nobody offers. And then when you went near Miami, did you see Miami? The, the That's why I don't like Florida. We were for over almost a week going up and down and see Miami. I once went because I visited a cousin, but I don't didn't like Florida one bit. And Ursula, can I ask, were there any demonstrations uh, in Florida, in Miami, let let the people of the not, ship? Not to my knowledge, and I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I really, my parents never mentioned anything like that. It's very sad. The the Canadian Prime Minister last yes. year, he apologized they for... They were not Mr. Roosevelt. And Mr. Roosevelt never apologized and did nothing he to help. He didn't want us. He could have taken us. We oh. all had papers for America. Wow. But it was just a matter of quota. You know what the quota is? You register. You know, my, my sister... But in order to register at the American Embassy, you have to have proof that somebody will take care of you when you come mm -hmm. to America. So I had first cousins, they already were in America, and they sent an effid, what you call an affidavit to my sister because they didn't make so much money yet. They just were very young. And you have to have funds in order to support somebody. So my sister got the numbers 5,000. 
So a couple of months later, they decided they made enough money and they sent one to me. I already had 6,000. My parents didn't have anyone yet. A couple of months later, an uncle of ours sent us an affidavit. The number was 10,000. So that's why my sister stayed in Germany. She took us back with our car to Hamburg to the St. Louis and stayed with relatives in Germany. This was in May and in November she came directly to America. So it was also good help for us she was there that she could also get in touch with different organizations to try to get us out of Gers. Wow. It was not so easy. So it must have been the most terrible atmosphere when the ship turned back to go back to Europe. It was horrible. It was horrible but I'm very fortunate. My parents are positive thinkers, were positive thinkers, and I inherited it. That's why I'm doing so well, after all I went through. You can't change it, you have to accept what's given to you. And if you make the best of it, you can survive. If you say, ah, uh ah, -uh, you don't survive. And Ursula, I just want to ask you, it's a very difficult question, but are you upset with the Jewish community in America that didn't do more to to help to to pressure the government to demonstrate to to do more to help i agree with you but you know something nowadays i'm upset more because anti-semitism in america is horrible yeah. and we, what can we do so at the time we had no time to be upset we just Again, think positive, we're going to make it somehow. So the ship went back? The ship went back to, to we went to England, we went to Amsterdam, uh, to uh, uh, Antwerp, and from, from there, we, somehow, somebody got an apartment for us, but I got a mother apartment. My mother had packed a lift from, from Germany to Cuba and went to America, so we had our furniture. In, we lived a year in Belgium, but when war broke out in F, but the Germans bombed Brussels. We, our apartment was next to a railroad station, and we didn't know what had happened. I was sleeping and I was pushed, out. I still hear the bombs. And then they arrested my father, but not because we were Jews, because we were enemy aliens. So my father went there, my mother and I took our papers and got on the train, we thought we go to France and that's when we were arrested. And where were you sent? Fine. Where, where did they send you? To Gurs. And you, was your father there as well? No, we had no idea whether our father was alive for over six months. The Red Cross came to Gurs with postcards, my father's name and different addresses from different camps. And after six months, we had a reply that he was alive. And where did they send him? To another camp in France, Les Mille, Camp de Mille. And for six months, you didn't know what had happened? They had no idea whether he was, where he was or whether he was living. You can imagine when we finally, after a year and about three months, my father came to Marseille. <laughs> we went to the embassy, we went to Lisbon, and on a first class, ship to America. My sister got us first and I don't, to this day I don't know how we had no different clothes, how we made it. I don't, that I cannot remember at all. It wasn't easy, that's for sure. And the camp that you went to, how long did you stay in that camp in Gerst? Pardon? How long were you in the camp? About a year and three months. From, from January until uh, a year and November, about a year and a half almost, less than a little less than a year and a half we were in camp. With no bed, with straw on the, on the floor, with rats and mice, no decent food. How we survived is a miracle. And my parents and I went on. From, from Lisbon to America and my parents were fortunately lived a wonderful retirement in America 
and it's something I'm so thankful for. My father passed away when he was 90 and my mom 94. So I have good genes. And I just want to ask you, Asia, when you, when you were in the camp, was it a camp not only for Jewish people? Was it a... Uh, now you're asking me, I don't know. We had, we were very much for ourselves. My parents, my mother, but we didn't want to fight. My mother and I were very much for... What we did, my mother, she liked poetry. She wrote poems in German, you know. And then we sang poems just to keep wow. our mind occupied. And this we had no access to a library or anything. It was, it was death. Almost death. And, no, and who was mainly in the camp? Pardon? Who was mainly in the camp? Who were the inmates in the camp? It's French. Outside was the Germans and the Vichy government. And this was in, in Belgium? No, in France, Gurs. Oh, so France. They, they took you from Belgium and they sent you to France? My mother and I left Belgium going to France hoping we wouldn't... Oh, and them. when you were in France... Then we were arrested and sent to Gurs. In cattle cars. That cattle car was something horrible. I don't know. There's no facility. It took about two, three days. They first didn't know where to get us. First they put us in a prison and then, I didn't know it was a prison, but later on I found out it was a prison. <laughs> but you know, I'm here. It's amazing and you're so positive after what you've been through. It's, it's incredible. It is amazing, isn't it? It really is. It's incredible. But do you know why? Because I have lovely friends like Honey and many friends like her, which keep me going. Because I, and my family, you, can you show a picture of my family? Where's, where's this album? Here's it. Here. And then if we can just see the book where you came from, the, t the town that you... Yes, um, this is Ronnenberg. This is Ronnenberg, this was your home? That was my house. And this is, this is the Juden van Ronnenberg. Yes, and can you show us in the picture, your father in the picture? Yes, here's my father. See? Your father is um, Siegfried in the middle. Of the yeah, and your mother is she? Yes, here. Here's a, is this one. Wow. Alma. And, it and was I'm here. Wow. When I was young, and beautiful. <laughs> it's still beautiful. And your your other sister, she's Pardon? your other sister. Your sister, she's also my, no. My sister was uh, stayed in America. It, it stayed in Germany until she left for America. The same. But she is she she's not she's in, not in no because she was she went straight. She is not in this group. Was this, this, these people were cousins and they never made it. But this. This is a fellow who, who made it to Cuba, that's my father's cousin. So he Three made months it to, before, he the made same visa we had, but they made it and we didn't. And then these are cousins that didn't make it? They're, they're yeah, this is one. This is brother and sister. And they didn't Rose make it? Rosie and Max Seligman. And they, they were killed in the Shire. Wow, so it's very difficult. The I have lots of difficulty. What is this? Wow, and we're going to show a picture. This is on your 97th birthday, Ken and Hora. And this is, wow, this is beautiful. My, f my granddaughter, who lives in Rehobos, she loves to make parties for me. And we have a room here I can rent. And she caters it. Wow. It's, good. it's lovely, it really is. I have a wonderful can family. Can you show the picture of the, the town? Your town looked a very nice town. Um, I where you grew up, it looked a beautiful. I, I don't have a picture of the town, so. So this is a picture of. Um, this is like an ID card for you, Ursula. This is a Seligman, and it's a picture of you, and it's got uh, revenue stamps. Yeah. These friends of mine who came visiting me, they made up this this book. That's the town. And have you ever been back to the town? 
Would you ever go? Oh, it's too difficult. I was invited. I could have had free hotel and everything yeah. for this pot Protestant. I sent my niece and nephew. I, it's too difficult. I didn't want to. G I'm doing so well here. Why should I get sick? Yeah. Yeah. Did you take the picture in the front, Ronnenberg? The f yeah. In the front. Did you get that one? Yeah, it's very. Very special, wow. And then there's the Juden from the other pamphlet, there's the Juden from uh, Ronnenberg. Is this the from the St. Louis? This is the, this is the same picture from... Uh, uh, from I think it was Mr. No, here's the same. Oh, so let's see... Um, That's from the St. Louis also. That's from St. Louis. Wow. I'm going to just read this over here. So we can just go through. Voyage of the... So this is from the Voyage of the St. Louis. It's a, a very iconic picture in the porthole. Wow, and you can see the despair. It's a very special picture here. You can see the despair on the faces, the unknown. It's and and Ursha, are you in touch with anybody from the St. Louis? Are you in touch with anybody? There are not many leave. Uh, several years ago, we had a group meeting in Washington, but I think there only maybe two or three other people living. And there may be some younger ones, I don't know. I'm not in touch with anybody. And this is the route. I'm just going to show. This is the route from Hamburg. It left from Hamburg. From Hamburg to Cuba. To Cuba. And, from and then it went. Cuba back to. To Antwerp. Antwerp. But then there were some that went to England. England took, I think, a quarter. Some England, and Holland, France, and Holland, Belgium, and, and Holland. Holland. And this is the the captain. Um, oh, he he was a wonderful fellow. What's his name? Does it say Captain uh, Schroeder, right? Schroeder. Yeah, Captain Schroeder. Schroeder. Do you remember the captain? I remember the captain because he came in. He said, "I'm trying." to stay here as long as we can until we know where we can let you off. He was a wonder, he was not an anti-Semite. So it said here the majority, majority of passengers in contravention of Cuban law 937 and may not be given permission to disembark. This there was a cable to Captain Schroeder two days before scheduled landing in Havana. And they say that, that Captain Gustav Schroeder seems a very nice man. And you remember him, you can... He came up on the board and tell us we're trying our very, very best. So he, he had worked for 37 years. He had experience on the sea. Uh -huh. And before he took the helm of the St. Louis, he was the first person aboard the ship to learn that this, this embark, disembarking in Cuba might be impossible. At the urging of passenger committee was uh, initially formed to maintain calm on board the ship and to serve as a liaison between the captain and other passengers. For his efforts during the voyage to find safe haven, Schroeder was honored posthumously by Yad Vashem in Israel as one of, wow, he was given Chassidei Matolam, one of the righteous amongst the That's nations. I, 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 wow. If it says so, it's, it's, this comes all from the Holocaust Museum in Washington this book. So it says, after the, the voyage, Captain Schroeder continued to sail the St. Louis until a war broke out. At a reunion of the former St. Louis passengers in 1989, Captain Schroeder's hat was presented to the former passengers by his relatives. Sure, it's, a, what it's I very special. Have been, I don't know, I have a paper from the Holocaust Museum where they thanked me for bringing I should have gotten, I don't know, but which... And here's just pictures which, from, from... This This must bring back amazing memories. Yeah, do you see this picture from the, from the 
captain here. Yeah, that's amazing. And he was given Hasidah Hamotalam, which is... He was a, he was a mensch. But you know, I've had exp here when people ask me your story, I say I have so many experiences. I don't know which one is better or, or worse. <laughs> but so, the main thing is I'm here. So actually, it's it's an amazing thing. This is from an editorial. At least the New York Times wrote something. We can only hope some hearts will soften and some refugee will be f will be found. The cruise of the St. Louis cries to the high heaven of man's inhumanity to man. And there's a cartoon with the Statue of Liberty saying, keep out. They kept you out. Wow. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's just, it's amazing that I'm doing as well as I'm doing. <clears throat> it really is amazing. Yes. And, um, out of all the passengers that went back to Europe, yes, there were quite a few that unfortunately, like within your family, that didn't make it. There were some that were sent straight to the camps. But I, I don't know if it was. You know, I've talked. You know, when you're in that situation, my parents and I, we tried not to worry too much about somebody else because. We had to find ways for us to survive, to find a place to where we're going. So I, we, we didn't mingle with many other people. Nowadays, here I'm here, I have friends here and there, but there was only one way to get away from there and where we could. My mother wrote so many letters <laughs> to people in America. It's so sad but, um, that they could have left. you right there in Havana. you right in the port in Havana and it's such a big country. Right. Or in America, they say the Virgin Island was empty. They could have, you know, transferred, a ha you're talking l less than a thousand people. I know. Wow. Those people went. And here's a pass. Wow. So here's a. Um, <coughs> this is Havana. And here's a, a very famous postcard of the St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis Hamburg. And let me ask after the. After you were. Um, freed from the camp in France and you were reunited with your father, where did you, did you go immediately to Lisbon? Well, we got out of camp first, there was a, a hotel terminus. It's like a holding camp for people who had papers for America. We were there maybe for t six weeks or so. But my father was in Camp de Mill and he met us there just the day before we went on the train to Madrid and Lisbon. We were, my, my mother and I were in Marseille a, f a few weeks before we got out of camp, but my father met us there when we were ready to take the train to Madrid and Lisbon where we got the Colonial was a boat that took us to America. But when I came to America with my parents, my sister and my cousins were in New York to pick us up. When I got off the boat, that was called Colonial was a boat. I didn't, I was down from the boat. I thought my feet were going up, going back on the boat. And my mother felt the same way. Because we, we couldn't believe we actually came to put foot and the United States. And how long did you stay in Madrid and in it, in Madrid and Lisbon? Did you stay a few in, days? In Lisbon, only one day. We just only one day. One day. We went from Marseille to Madrid. And we had to change trains by train, and then from train from Madrid 
to Lisbon and we had a few hours and my mother took we went into a delicatessen store I hadn't seen any food it was like <laughs> I still remember it there was all the food hanging <laughs> from the ceiling and one thing about my, my parents they all my mother had a knitting a brown knitting thing and inside she always had money to how she <laughs> how she kept it all that time. When we left Germany, she put a bunch of money in there that no, because we weren't allowed to take anything. Sure. But it was a knitting thing. So we did have money and bought, and bought some. What we bought, I don't remember, but I know we had something that tasted like something. You know, in Lisbon, there were quite a, uh, quite a few prominent Jews, like the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He also went via Lisbon to America. I went back to Lisbon on a trip several years later. And do you, did you have the memories that had come back? <laughs> it was also Barcelona, but I did, it was a beautiful trip back, going back to Spain and, and, and uh, Portugal. But uh, in many ways, I remember and I don't remember. Because our mind was always not where we were, where are we going to be? Yeah. I don't know if you can understand that. We, my mother and I, we always be, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? And somehow we were very close. It got, got to America. It's really, I'm here like a little miracle. It is a miracle, yeah. Right. And here, yeah, being in Israel is great. And Israel, can I just ask, Pardon? when you got to America, did you speak about your experiences? Were people yes, interested I, in this? It took me a little while, several years later. I it had to ask out by synagogue, I gave a few talks. I was, it wasn't easy. And how was the response? Everybody feels sorry for you, what can they do? But nobody could do anything, that's a problem. Even nowadays, this is what I'm saying. We as Jews, it's been just... Uh, that part I don't understand. But I, we have to accept it, I guess. But, but I can't do anything. But there's so many organizations, why can't they do more? That's true. Don't you think? So some, something like this should never have happened that there should have been enormous pressure on, um, on, on all the governments, on all the officials. Right, but... Here you had a boat with, with desperate passengers who had valid visas and to allow it to sail back without, without that, that, uh, that demonstrating that and going crazy, it's, it's, it should never have happened and it should never happen again. Hopefully not. But this... The world is not a perfect place. We have to make it perfect. <laughs> In a small way, what can you say, you know? I was I was not allowed to go enter the Lyceum or the college in Germany. She was not allowed. So I came to America. I did learn English in school, but you know you don't and I was able to start working for fifty cents an hour. The first, first week in the basement, some place to pack it, packages, just to. We stayed with my, my sister in her apartment. My parents stayed with my father's, my brother lived in a small apartment. You go through stages that you never expected to have to go through, and you can make it. And your husband that you married was American? No, he was from Germany and in, he was from a place not too far from, but I didn't know him. I met him in, Amer in Washington. And did, did, he, did he go through the show? He went, or no, he didn't. He, he came went, to America he before? Had, he had uh, relatives in America and he, he and his sister came to America, his parents went to England and later on they came to America. Mm -hmm. So my husband's family didn't have didn't have the luck I had. <laughs> sure. Well, it's so lovely to see you smiling and so positive. Well, 
I'm trying to, people ask me, I went to the Hadassah Dental Clinic, there were these students, and they asked me, how do you make it? I said, think positive, that's all. It's a wonderful attitude to have. You know, and I'm fortunate that I'm, I inherited from my parents. Yeah, they were always positive. My mother, my father, my mother was a gourmet cook and my cousins used to came to our house. My mother's first name was Alma. Alma Wunderbar. Wunderbar, <laughs> yeah, that's in Yiddish as well. I remember that so well. I have wonderful good memories, you know, from way back. Then bad memories I throw out and now... You concentrate on the, on on the, the positive, friend. on the positive. I um, think that's a lesson for many people, right? To, to concentrate more on the positive. On, Isn't it you know, better? It's much, much better, it's true. So I just want to... Um, I think you want to go in as well? Okay. Come on. Come on. So, Don't be so silly. No. So I just want to thank you so much. It's been the greatest honor and a privilege. Thank you, Glassman. I agree. Me, <laughs> telling me about you, I said, well, I really don't like to do it, but she says, he's a special person, I think you should. Well, honey, thank you so much. You're and her fine. father, her whole family. I had, a I had a wonderful use. I, I and my grandparents, uh, unfortunately, my grandfather didn't make it. My grandmother died before. But they're all very warm people. I was raised in a wonderful environment. Well, you can see it. It permeates. <laughs> permeates your whole, your whole being. But you are such an inspiration. But thank and you. Thank you so much. And at You're Mavis very welcome. Room, I hope you continue to do well. Thank you so much. Do you have family? Thank God. Yeah. How many kids can you? Two, two, two daughters and we just got our first grandchildren. Oh, Mazel Tov. Thank you so much. I, have, I already had three bar mitzvah and oh. now two bus mitzvahs of great grandchildren. Oh, can and hurry. And I can enjoy it. And maybe stream in good health and thank you so much. You're quite welcome. All the best to you. Stay well with your family. Thank you so much. Wow. <coughs> if I can help a little bit, I try to. I can't do much anymore, but you know. So you are an inspiration. <laughs> an inspiration to us all. Thank, thank you. you.